Mr. Opening statement. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. And uh, I think all of us know that Texas has been hit uh, hard by the opioid crisis. Uh, one in four Texans have, in, have experienced an uh, opioid uh, over, overdose or know someone who has. Uh, and as it was just pointed out in North Texas recently, uh, we experienced a string of, of similar deaths, including in, in high school age uh, children. Uh, because of this, I joined my colleagues in taking action to address the opioid crisis uh, and give much related, uh, uh, relief to people uh, here in my home state of Texas. Uh, last Congress, we passed a bipartisan mental health and substance abuse use treatment package, H.R. 7666. Uh, that is Restoring Hope for Mental Health and Wellbeing Act of 2022, and it was later signed into law as part of, of the Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2023. Uh, this historic piece of legislation ensures that medical practitioners are prepared to identify and treat substance abuse disorders and increase access to medication-assisted treatment. Uh, it also uh, authorizes billions of dollars in public health programs that address the mental health and substance abuse crisis, including both the Substance Use uh, Prevention, Treatment, and Recovery Services Block Grant and State Opioid Response Grants. We should be focusing heavily on increasing access to prevention, treatment, and recovery for those struggling with substance abuse. Uh, I would welcome a field hearing in Texas that explored bipartisan solutions to this public health crisis. Uh, we were able to work together on bipartisan uh, solutions last Congress uh, when Democrats were in the majority. Uh, instead, we're here discussing uh, things like the, militar the militarization of our border. Uh, we continue to hear uh, misinformation that falsely links illegal immigration with a surge in fentanyl trafficking, uh, and that's simply not reality. We know for a fact, uh, we know for a fact even from uh, very conservative organizations like the Cato Institute, which was founded by the Koch brothers, uh, we know that a majority of fentanyl-related convictions do not involve undocumented immigrants. Uh, in 2021, the number of U.S. citizens convicted of fentanyl was 10 times higher than the convictions of undocumented immigrants for the same offense. Uh, we also know that a majority of fentanyl uh, smuggled illegally comes through legal ports of entry and not at illegal crossings. Uh, instead of acknowledging these facts and taking constructive action to address the opioid crisis, Republicans are using misinformation to encourage excessive incarcerations, uh, which we should have learned something from from the 90s, detentions uh, and deportations at the border. Uh, this field hearing today is nothing more than a political stunt targeted at the extreme elements uh, of the Republican Party. Enough of the mis misinformation. We need a facts-based approach to the humanitarian crisis at the border. President Biden has taken steps to streamline the immigration process by, ex by expanding pathways for safe, orderly, and humane migration without compromising border security. This has included expanding the parole process for immigrants from certain countries, expanding refugee resettlement opportunities, and modernizing appointment processes at U.S. ports of entry. Uh, such efforts are already showing signs of success. January 2023 uh, saw some of the lowest levels of monthly border encounters since February 2021. Uh, in contrast, Republicans seem more interested in political stunts like this one than working uh, with uh, the president and Democrats on a humane and lawful approach uh, to border security and immigration, like passing a comprehensive immigration reform uh, bill. Uh, for example, congressional Republicans have repeatedly voted against bills uh, funding security at the border, including most recently a $4.9 billion supplemental funding request in December 2022. Uh, it's clear that Republicans are more interested in politics than ro rolling up their sleeves and doing the hard work to address this humanitarian a crisis at the border and fixing our broken immigration system uh, and doing something about this fentanyl problem that is plaguing all of our communities. Sadly, we have had an opportunity, we have had an opportunity to talk about evidence-based approach to address substance use, uh, substance abuse use, but uh, we were denied testimony from an expert witness who has worked directly with communities affected by fentanyl along the border. This is a huge missed opportunity that really could have made a difference in the lives of people 
in the surrounding communities. If Republicans are serious about addressing illicit fentanyl, uh, I would hope uh, that they would work with us on real solutions rather than dodge opportunities from witnesses with firsthand experience. I look forward to working with my colleagues on both sides of the aisle uh, to address the opioid crisis uh, in our communities and this humanitarian crisis at our border. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank the gentleman, and now the chair recognizes the chair of the full Energy and Commerce Committee, Ms. McMorris-Rogers, for her five-minute opening statement. Thank you, Mr.